Hey Trick and welcome back to my channel. From time to time I do product reviews or I might do some tips or tricks on something. We're going to do a product review on this. It's the Ego Smart Tankless Water Heater. Uh, you can get these at your big box store or online. I'll put some links at the bottom of uh, my page on YouTube. Uh, I might save you some money, either eBay or Amazon. I am an affiliate of both those stores. And I appreciate if you click on those links, it helps the channel. All right, let's get that out of the way. So what you're going to need here for this particular deal here is we're going to we're going to flush. I'm going to show you the review on this at another time. But I'm going to do the flush. It's going to be backwards on my reviews. But just stay tuned to my channel and you'll see it. So what I did here is I installed this about a year, year and three months ago, I guess, here on our modern farmhouse design. Everything in the house is um, eco-friendly here. Uh, the electric's pretty decent down here in South Carolina. And I installed these flush valves here with these ports here and here. Now what happens is you got your cold water comes in here, goes through your coils, it's basically a uh, heat exchanger. And then it takes that and it heats your water up to a certain temperature. Right now we're at 120 and it'll go all the way up to 140 degree Fahrenheit. It's going to burn the heck out of you. So 120 is pretty decent. And this unit is actually handling two bathrooms, a uh, washing machine, and I've got a slop sink in the laundry room, kitchen sink, and two double bowl sinks in the other bathrooms. This will heat enough water for the entire house, for a four bedroom house. We'll put us back up to 120 again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat it up. I'm gonna run some water in the other room. I'm gonna let these coils go ahead and get nice and hot. And the thing is, with these particular units, the only thing you gotta worry about is they've got like a brass type of um, coil system in here uh, with um, some elements, some heating elements in there. And if you live in an area that you get high scale, hard, hard water environment, and you'll know if you have hard water environment because you're gonna get that white scale on your plumbing fixtures and um, in your sink, the faucets, you know, you'll have that crusty white scale that doesn't seem to want to go away. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do an acid wash and we're going to do a mild acid with vinegar, just regular distilled vinegar. You've probably seen some other ones online. I'm going to try to simplify this. But anyway, with these flush valves, what you do is you shut this valve off here and you'll be able to feed your water in here now, your flush solution. You're going to cut this valve off here that goes out to the house and we're going to return that back into the bucket. So I'm going to have hoses coming from both of these ports here right into a bucket. I have just a regular submersible utility pump here. I you know, want one that's going to be able to attach to like a washing machine hose, such as this. And it feeds from the bottom. I've used this in my aquarium tray for years to pump out aquariums and different things, my larger aquariums when I have them. And you're going to need a hose connection off the top of your utility pump there. That's not an MPT thread, that's going to be a hose thread. Hose threads are a little bit wider on the thread makeup and you'll know the difference. So what we do is we take this and we put it right on here. You're going to have a hose connection coming off your flush valve. Now, if you don't have flush valves installed, you're going to have to disconnect your plumbing completely and shut off your valve. Hopefully you got a shut off valve or your main to your house. And you're going to have to go in through your inlet here on the cold side and then come out on the hot side in the bucket. Same thing, just a little bit harder to do. So we go ahead and we put this on here. Make sure it's nice and tight. And I'm going to hope that that's good because it's got a little play. And then the return one here is going to go right back into the bucket. Put it on right there. I'll shorten this video up if it seems like it's getting too long. Put the utility pump back in. This is going to be the return line coming out. You want to make sure that that's in there so it don't go popping out of there for you. And this goes to the pump here. So we're all set. All we got to do is put our solution in. And you're going to want to get that from like your box store, big box store or whatever. They're like uh, $3, I guess, for a gallon of them. And I'm going to put about three gallons in here. 
That should put us up to about there, which is plenty. Over the pump so the pump doesn't cavitate. You're supposed to let this run for about four hours. I'm gonna let it run for about two hours. I'm gonna take a look at the solution and see if we're getting anything out of it, if it's changing, uh, the, it's discolored or whatever, I'll know that it's working. I mean, two hours, if you're not getting anything out of it, you're pretty much done and it's no big deal. Now, full disclaimer, up line, I actually have a uh, water filter that has a carbon block in it and a pleated filter for my whole house filtration. And I'm hoping that that broke some of this down so it didn't come down here as I'm periodically changing those filters out on a uh, monthly basis. So the goal is to try to keep it out of these coils or that uh, calcium will just stick right to those coils and it'll start to degrade those um, internal parts the sensors, the um, heating element and all that. And you can change the heating elements out, but they're like 80 bucks a piece and that can get pricey. The whole unit here, I think was around 600, $650. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and hooked up here and I backfed some water back into this bucket and filled it up to about here. I have a bunch of leaks here. So this is a way to leak test it. We got our valve shut off here. We have our inlet coming in here that's feeding our water for right now. Gonna shut that off. So now these are both shut. Both supply and return to the house are shut off. We'll go ahead and we'll turn our pump on. And that's simple, just by plugging it into the wall. Make sure our hoses don't jump out. Right away I can see I got a leak. Now I had to double up those washers because apparently the threads on here are really shallow and it's bottoming out on my washing machine hose. Okay, there we go. Uh, no leaks or anything. I'm just running regular hot water through this right now, kind of doing an initial flush. You want to make sure your bucket is definitely clean when you start out. If you want any chunks or anything in there, rust, dirt, stones, whatever, that's going to get into your tubes on your system. So when I'm happy with this, I'm going to dump it out and we'll go ahead and we'll put in our uh, two gallons of white distilled vinegar. Okay, here we go. Gallon number one. You might actually get away with just one gallon. Um, you could run it as long as it's um, you know above that intake on your pump and wash out your system make sure that it doesn't go dry if you, if you uh, power it up but if it looks like it's getting um you know full of debris and all you want to keep on forcing it through there so you can dump that out and put another gallon in or strain it off it's up to you so we'll go ahead and plug it in now we got our vinegar in there that's rock and roll now. Now we're washing the whole system. I'll bring the camera over here so you can see better. So like I said, I'm gonna let it run for about two hours. Okay, that's it. So unplug it. So the pump heated the water up, actually to where I can see some steam. And I can see some sediment there, so we'll uh, dump this out and dump the vinegar out of the bucket. Well, everything's very hot, so you want to make sure you get yourself some quality hoses, because especially if you have a pump that's running for a period of time, it's going to eat everything up, so that's just a quick tip there. Well, even the tubes are hot, so we don't have to worry about heating it up. It heated up itself just from the pump. We go ahead and take all these hoses off, and I'm going to flush this out with cold water. Just hook your hose up to this side, Leave it closed off here, open up the cold water here, and we're going to flush this for about 15 minutes to get all that vinegar out of there so it doesn't go back through the system. Okay, so right now I'm flushing. So I have my water going into my bucket right there. It's pumping it right back out. It's cleaning the pump, it's cleaning my lines, and it's also cleaning the coils out from all that vinegar that was in there for the initial flush. And just going through our flush valves. Good 15 minutes of flush and it should be fine, should be out of there. Okay, I put our caps back on, so we put everything back in service. I'll put my panel back on. 
go ahead and throw the breaker and re-energize my hot water tank. And now you can see how it looks on the internals. I took that off. I'm also going to show this on the other video. These are the individual heating foils. Hey, that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. That subscribe button is running down there in the corner. Please hit it. Smash that bell icon to let you know immediately when we have any videos coming up. Please share with your family and friends. Give us a like on YouTube. It ranks us higher on YouTube. Take care, everybody.